travel for, we'll travel for, we'll travel for vegan food. Hey everyone, Kristen here with We'll Travel for Vegan Food. I'm here today at the Liz Lovely Factory with Dan. I'm CEO, yeah. I'm, CEO, I'm okay. co-founder with Liz. Nice, nice. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna go in for a little tour, but before we do that, can you tell me a little bit about how Liz Lovely got started, Dan? Um, well, it was 2003, and we were really tired of eating those alternative baking company cookies from California. We'd eaten way too many of them, and we were out of work, and had a pretty good runway of unemployment in front of us and uh, just decided, you know, this is a great baker, you know, we should try to start our own company. And uh, so we spent a few months just baking cookies, well Liz was baking cookies and just trying to figure out what would sell. And, um, and then we were kind of getting nowhere. We had good recipes but um, just couldn't really break through into any local stores. And a friend of ours said, what are you guys doing? Just like get in your truck and drive to Whole Foods, like their office. Mm -hmm. So we drove down to Maryland uninvited. We knew they were having a big bakery meeting and we showed up and we pushed boxes through the, the window to the receptionist and said, yeah, these are for the meeting. And then, <laughs> nice. just, and then just left because we weren't supposed to be there anyway. And uh, two weeks later they called and they said, I don't have any information. I just have this like package left, but we want these cookies. Oh, awesome. And that's kind of how it all started. And um, when, within about a year, we had about 100 stores carrying us. In, we were actually in Philadelphia when we started. And then um, we, moved, we relocated the business up here, which was really a crazy idea, but it, it sort of worked in the end. We shut down for a whole summer and restarted it here, nice. which is just a much nicer location, yeah. as you can see, than a, a four-lane double yellow with a supermarket across <laughs> the street. Right. And, um, and I guess the rest is kind of history. Awesome. Visit www.lizlovely.com for the story. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's, that's great. So why don't we take a little tour and see how this is all done? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Cool. We'll travel for, we'll travel for, we'll travel for vegan food. Oh, it smells delicious here. <laughs> the chocolate smell lingers pretty well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is the uh, this is the Liz Lovely Bakery. We're not baking anything today. Uh, we run a four-day compressed work week, 10-hour days, which is both more efficient for production and it gives people longer weekends, which is cool. It's kind of part of the nice. Liz Lovely corporate culture. Cool. Corporate culture of <laughs> nine people. Come this way. So cookies start. Um, well, we, we pre-measure a lot of our ingredients. And uh, some of them end up in the, in the refrigerator and some of them end up not, depending on the day. And then we basically start here in, the, in our not too ridiculously large mixer. And you can see like this tells us what we're making on any given day uh, and how many batches. So we'll run, let's say, between 12 and 18 mixer runs per production day, depending on how much stuff we need to make. Cool. So we mix here and then we unload into buckets and then we come over here to this machine. So this thing is, is ironically a very unvegan machine. It's actually um, a British hamburger patty cutter. Oh wow. That has been repurposed for chunky cookies here in the States. And it's like, um, this isn't really a factory sized machine. This is more like a corner bakery sized machine, mm -hmm. uh, but it's pretty effective for what we do. And, uh, and it keeps it kind of more handmade you know, instead of they're just like coming out in trays and droves, you know, it, every cookie is sort of handled and inspected. And so basically what happens is um, there's like a big hopper that goes on here and a couple of paddles. It's pretty easy to visualize. It's just spinning the dough into this hole right here. Mm -hmm. But this is where all the magic happens. This thing is, uh, is a plunger wheel. I'm not sure if that's the real name for it, but that's what we call it. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what I call it. So what it does is it, it basically just sits right in here, and as it comes around, it sweeps dough into the form. Oh, cool. And then when it, this cam here allows it to push the dough right out, flush with the end, and then a wire kind of cuts it off, and there's like a little belt that's normally right here, and it just plop, plop. So it's, you know, it's 180 degrees apart. Every, I think it's uh, 4,000 an hour or something oh. it can kick out. Cool. And this little S-shaped thingy 
allows us to change the set depth, which allows us to change the weight mm -hmm. so we can make sure that the weight is on every day. And then there's a little screw that allows us to adjust the weight side to side so that they're even. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a few of these kind of cut to the right size. These wheels are like two grand a piece because it's wow. like every part on this thing yeah. is custom made. Oh. So like a gasket breaks and we're out a hundred bucks. It's, mm. but it you know but the nice thing is we can pretty much fix it ourselves and uh, and it does what we, want, what we want it to do. It doesn't break up the chunks too much. So that's the cookie cutter. So it comes out on, and someone actually puts every single cookie onto a tray here. Mm -hmm. And on some days, like on Ginger Snapdragon days, um, the trays go back to these tables right here. And we do the sugaring, the ginger, all that stuff totally by hand. Um, and then on days that we don't do that, they just go up onto racks and straight into the oven. Like this is, these are all what you call speed racks, but, but these racks in particular are oven racks because they've got these rails on the top and they're made of heavier metal and they're made of like burn proof wheels. Oh, nice. Like aircraft metal or something. <laughs> these, are, these are the industrial ones. And these guys go straight into the oven. So this is a, wow. what we call a rotating rack oven. And we basically can stick two of those racks into this guy. And there's that, uh, that rail at the top. The rack's attached to the rail. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it turns it. Well, the rail lifts them off the ground oh. and then begins turning them. Oh, because wow. it's a hot air oven, it's all convection based. Uh, and you don't want the wheels to get caught up. So it picks right. up the racks and it turns them around, you know, for uh, an undisclosed amount of time <laughs> at an undisclosed temperature. What there I can tell you is that most of our flavors have unique recipes, times, and temperatures, which, which is what makes them, you know, the ginger cookie such a great ginger cookie and the peanut mm -hmm. butter cookie such a great peanut butter cookie. I'm we know. sure that the taste testing process was awful. <laughs> well, you know, we just, we just started testing some brand new products, yeah. and it's been a horrible chore, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. Well, if you ever need anyone to, you know, do that terrible work, just let me know. I'll, I'll sludge through it for you. <laughs> well, I do, we do have a top secret project that we're working on for PETA, oh. a brand new cookie that we're going to call, code name, the Creature Comforts Cookie. <laughs> okay. And it's in partnership with them, and we can actually taste test that today. I have some Ooh. secret unmarked samples. Sounds good to Isn't me. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> yeah. So after the oven... Um, assuming that, that we're going we're gonna to put chocolate on the cookies, which we do like not every day, but some days, we come over here to the chocolate room. Ooh, it smells so good in here. <laughs> so this is um, a chocolate truffle enrobing machine made in uh, Massachusetts called a Hilliard chocolate system. And, uh, and we keep the chocolate melted all the time. Chocolate is a, is a totally fat-based substance. It has no water in it, so it never molds. Mm -hmm. uh, but it takes forever to melt. So if we let it solidify, either under here, there's a kettle under here, or in the big tank, like it's going to be days before we can use this thing again. So we just keep it cooking all the time. And basically, this machine does, allows us to do two things. It allows us to temper the chocolate, because when, like if you, for example, have ever microwaved your chocolate to melt it, and then you try to reset it on your counter, it never gets back to its original kind of snappy, shiny format. Mm -hmm. um, this allows us to kind of get the sugar and fat crystals back to that place where it becomes shiny and snappy like a chocolate bar again. Mm. So we do that whole temperature, funky process, and then, uh, and then this whole apparatus allows us to do coating. So for the Lovely O's, we actually have a different unit that goes right here that creates curtains of chocolate. We could chocolate cover basically any inanimate object that will fit through the slot. Um, and then this, this one is actually the bottomer. So when we do stuff like the cowboy cookie that has the layer on the bottom, mm -hmm. the cookies start here in the crumb catcher and they pass through this sort of like little pool of chocolate. And when they come out the other side, they've got this nice kind of slathery bottom on them. And then we do all the tops by hand um, we just use pastry bags and old fashioned. We just cut a hole in it and somebody stands right here. And we actually had bought a machine called a stringer to do that for us. And it, and it was such a pain. We were like, well, we should just do this. I mean, if someone's going to babysit a machine, let's just do it the old fashioned way. Cool. And then it cruises through here. And then um, this is actually my favorite part right here. It's called the detailer. I think I might be able to turn it on for you. I know it's kind of a silly little detail. 
the detailer. Um, but it, it has a really cool, it has a really cool job. So as things come by, you can kind of see there's little bits of chocolate streaming off of it. It actually sucks the chocolate, the excess chocolate, off the bottom of whatever is going by so that it doesn't get like all funky and gooey at the end with a weird tail. It, you know, it's, cool. it's more cosmetic than anything, but I like it because it's got well, a cool Well, being a belt. designer, I can see why you would appreciate that. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And then uh, it all it spends about seven, eight minutes in the cooling tunnel. And the cooling tunnel is just a long covered conveyor with air conditioning built in that cool. keeps it about 50 degrees. Um, it takes seven or eight minutes for chocolate to set properly. Mm -hmm. And so you can do the math. You know, it's the, the speed of the belt is a function of the length of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to run the belt faster, we'd have to blow out the back wall and add tunnel. Uh, this is actually a pretty long tunnel for a small company. It's like a 23-foot tunnel. But you can, I mean, it, it, it seems like it would be a pretty fast operation. It actually moves at a snail's pace. But you'd be surprised when you've got a belt full of cookies at the other end, how fast that feels. <laughs> right. Sometimes it's like, oh my god. And then you're like grabbing cookies like crazy. And, um, but uh, yes, yeah, so that's the uh, that's the cooling tunnel, and then I'm going to throw the covers back on here so that we don't create problems on Monday. So then we come down to this end. This is the outloading end, where uh, cookie elves feverishly unload the belt back onto trays and then up onto racks. Um, Usually we don't just have the gaping drop off here. Mm -hmm. There's usually like a table and a tray there so we can, you know, if anyone misses, we can reclaim <laughs> stuff. And then it comes out here to the real like Willy Wonka-esque, well, I guess that was pretty Willy Wonka, but <laughs> in terms of the crazy machinery, um, this is really like the insanity of the place.